In studio with us, Nate Hairston dropping on by. Nate, good morning. How you doing? I'm doing well. How you guys doing? I'm doing great, man. Thanks so much for joining us. And if you want to watch the simulcast, you can at watchda.com. Available on your phone, on your PC, your tablet, your laptop, your smart TV. Watch us on the digital side of things at watchda.com. I know you'd rather be in here at 3-0, and but yeah. instead it's 0-3. But there's a bye here. Yes, sir. Bye week for you guys. Good time to be able to get away and decompress and not have to think about football maybe this weekend? Most definitely. I know normally you want your bye weeks later in the season, but um, seeing how we got a, a start to the season, it gives everybody a chance to rejuvenate guys that are injured, chance to you know get back healthy and, and get back on the field. So we're excited about having the early bye and getting back to work next week. You guys lost Sam Darnold after week number one to Mono. Have yep. you guys had any contact with him, or do they have to keep him away from the facility? Uh, yeah, he was quarantined a little bit. Um, yeah. he, he's back in the building now. He's back oh, in meetings, so that's positive, and, and hopefully we'll get him back up and going. Because that's a tough part. After week number one, you lose your starting quarterback, then you lose your second-string quarterback in the yeah. middle of that game, and now you're kind of scrambling yeah. down 0-1, now 0-2, 0-3. So just knowing you can get Sam back, that must give you guys a little bit more of a charge going forward. Yeah, most definitely. Just having him back and, and having him back healthy, that that's good. And um, we're excited about that. So, like I said, bye week came at the perfect time to, to get guys back up and running. Adam Gay seems like a really intense guy. Yeah. You know, he's really honest at the podium. How is he behind the scenes? Is he just as intense? Is he just as honest? Um, He is, man. He, 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 he shoots us straight. He lets us know what it is. It's the NFL. You know, your record. That's what you are. It's no, you know, it, that's that's what it is. So he keeps it 100 with us and lets us know. But he also is positive. He We have the right guys on the roster, and he reiterates that to us and, and lets us know what this team can be. But it goes hand-to-hand -hand being honest and, and being positive at the yeah. same time. Jets corner Nate Hairston joins us in studio. Do you guys like playing for him? I know that he's... He's a young coach who was only in Miami for three years, and a lot of the guys that are in that locker room haven't played for him before, if right. any, I'm guessing. But what's the relationship with him behind the scenes? Yeah, um, I've, I've only been here a short amount of time, but from everything I see, the guys love playing for him. I think everybody likes playing for an honest coach. Um, sometimes that's hard to find, but from everything I've seen, guys love playing for Coach Gay. We've read stories that he never sleeps, that, yeah. like, he gets, like, three hours of sleep a night, and even when he's sleeping three hours a night, he's probably thinking about plays and yeah. waking up his wife. Do you see that as well? Like, you go into the facility and he's been there for five hours? Yeah, I don't think anybody beats him into the building. Uh, <laughs> you got to take pride into that. I'm going to try to beat him in there uh, this week coming up. Yeah? But, uh, yeah, you can tell he, he's been in the building all day. Okay, so in your years in the NFL, this is your third season. Yes, sir. Who's been the earliest risers into the building in your three years? What players or coaches? Um, since I've been in New York, Jamal Adams, he he's in the building pretty early. Okay. I try to beat him, too. And uh, every time I walk in, he's just in the locker room doing something. <laughs> so he, he's in there pretty early. Okay, what about an Indy? An Indy. Uh, Andrew Luck, he was, he was always in there pretty early. That's probably the earliest guy was Andrew. It was crazy what happened in the preseason. Andrew Luck yeah. retires, and nobody kind of saw that coming. You were on the Colts. You were playing in that preseason game mm -hmm. when it got out. Did you guys have any sense going into that game that Luck was going to retire? Um, no, not at all. At least I didn't. I didn't. I don't know anybody that did, but uh, it kind of came out during the game, and you hear fans, you know, asking questions while we're on the sideline and. I didn't really know what was going on, and uh, we got into the locker room, and Andrew addressed us and let us know what it was. And from there, man, I think guys just could see it on his face. The, he was worn down, and, and from there, guys just kind of wished him the best, and we all, you know, hugged on him and loved on him and, and wished him the best going forward. Was it hard during that game to hear fans booing him? Yeah, because like I said, we don't know what's going on. Yeah. He, he hasn't addressed us yet. We, I'm just like, why? Why is everybody booing? And then, you know, like I said, seeing him break down and kind of let us know what was going on. It, it was hard to know that people booed him because he's done nothing but give his all to that city. He's come in and played through injury after injury and and given everything he's had. And he said, I I don't have any more to give. And what more can you ask from a man? But to be honest with his teammates, himself, and 
that's what he did. So I, I don't know how you could be mad at that. Yeah, I always thought that was so weird that fans would take out their frustration on him. He had done everything right. Mm -hmm. He was pretty emotional in that post game with you guys in the locker room. Most definitely, you you've been playing. Well, most of us have been playing football since we were little kids, and in the prime of your career to make the decision to walk away from that, it was hard and, and it was emotional in that locker room. Did everybody in that locker room respect? Andrew Luck's decision because they had seen him put in the work beforehand. In other words, did he have a pretty good relationship with everybody in that locker room? Yeah, he had a great relationship. Um, anybody that works hard, I feel like guys gravitate towards it, and that's what Andrew was. He was a hard worker. And um, so, you know, guys just tended to like him, and uh, it, yeah, it, it was tough. He also seemed like a quarterback that – was one of the guys. Mm -hmm. I mean, he didn't mind getting physical. He didn't mind sticking his fin his his nose in things. He didn't mind taking a pounding, being a leader, yeah. you know, and it just seemed like it was an easy guy to follow if he was the quarterback. Was that the case? Most definitely. He he was even though he was a first round pick and a number 1 overall pick, he still had that blue collar feel to him. You know, a lot of guys they they're not like that. He still had that that chippiness about him, the the style of football he plays. So, you know, guys like that, and, and guys want to go to war for a guy like that. Jets corner Nate Hairston joins us here in studio. He spent his first two years in Indianapolis. When you get traded, is that an ego hit, or do you go, oh, this is cool. Somebody wants me. I want to go play someplace that that I'm wanted. Yeah, I think it just depends on the guy, man. I I left Indy on a, on a good note. I still love you know Coach Reich and. Jim, Chris Ballard, all those guys over there. And uh, it was what was best for India. It was what was best for me. And it it, uh, it turned out good. So I'm, I'm happy to be in New York. And um, th they're having success over there. And we're going to get it turned around here. So it was good. Really good season for you guys last year. Getting to the postseason, obviously. Winning that playoff game in Houston. Yeah. Frank Reich is kind of known as a gunslinger. That he, yeah. he will take chance chances. And he yeah. wants to go for it. What was your experience playing for Frank Reich? Was it, uh, hey, we're going all out all the time. This is cool. Yeah, um, it's kind of it's kind of crazy because he's super mellow and laid back on the field. Yeah, and then he's aggressive. I mean, off the field, and then he's aggressive on the field. Yeah. So it, it's like kind of a perfect balance. You don't expect that from him meeting him off the field. So I like playing for for Coach Reich. He was a cool guy. So in New York, you know, there's always pressure. There's mm -hmm. always intensity, the media and the fans. And to start out 0-3 is tough. Has it been tough to kind of assimilate into New York and then also hear the criticism about your team and hear the fans of the media get on you while also trying to transition into this market? Um, it, it can be tough at times, but it's my job. You know, I signed up for this. I think the the best thing about it is knowing the kind of team that we have and the guys in the locker room and knowing that we can turn around turn it around. When I was in Indy last year, we started off 1 and 5 and ended up in the playoffs and and doing well. So seeing that, I think it gives me hope and and talking to those guys about what we went through last year in that first quarter of the season and letting them know we could turn it around. I mean, you just got to drown out that media and that outside noise and lean on the guys in the locker room and have each other's back and, and go from there. It might feel like a different season had you guys won that game, number one, the opening game at home against the Bills because you really outplayed them for most of that game. Okay. But you didn't end up obviously getting the victory. Was that a tough pill to swallow knowing that, you know, you guys had a healthy team at that point coming out of the offseason you outplayed the Bills but you just didn't get the W? Yeah, man, in the, in the NFL, wins are so hard to come by. So when, you, when you've got someone down, you, you've got to pin them down and, and, and finish it and we didn't do that so now you know in practice and things like that the end of practice we we look at that like the fourth quarter and we know we've got to finish practice on a high note and you know just working on finishing man you have to finish in the NFL and uh which we didn't do and I think we learned from that and and hopefully we can apply it moving forward so Le'Veon Bell has a message for the haters yeah he's saying embrace the hate <laughs> okay We're, we'll 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 show you guys right. down the road. What do you think? You guys feel the same way? We do. We all feel feel that way, and I think that's why he said it. It's a message from from everybody on the team. That's how we all feel, and uh, you know, we 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 talked about it as a team. And if you don't feel that way, it was you know, get out of the locker room. So everyone in there 
feels that way and, and knows we could turn it around. And we're excited, man, to get back from this bye, you know, fully healthy and ready to go. Lev Bell said, all you haters, enjoy it for now. Just don't go Casper when yeah. all this gets turned around. We embrace adversity. We embrace the hate. Yeah. And everyone wants to see my team fail or me fail individually. I'll remember, we'll remember it all and use it and wear it as a badge of honor. Yes. I feel the same way. All right. So we were just talking about this story that Jerry Jones said of Ezekiel Elliott getting yeah. butt naked and nothing but a towel and spanking the pony and yeah. getting all fired up, I guess, in the locker room. Is that common? Do we have guys in the locker room that are spanking the pony and going crazy <laughs> like that? I don't know anything about any ponies or, or <laughs> spankings or anything like that. I, <laughs> I can't speak for that. I've never seen that, so I, I don't know. I mean, I guess there's something to keep in the locker room loose, right? Is that a thing? Right. Is that an important dynamic? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a group of guys in the locker room, and and there's some characters. Yeah, it's some characters. So it, it is loose, but like I said, I don't I don't know anything <laughs> about any spankers or anything <laughs> like that. So I can't speak on that. <laughs> Have you played with a guy that really just made you laugh all the time? Because sometimes I go into a locker room and I talk to some guys and go, that, that dude is legitimately funny, and he just kind of keeps everybody loose and, yeah. and laughing. You ever play with a guy like that? Most definitely. Um, And Andy Jacoby was 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 a loose guy. Jacoby Brissett's that funny, huh? Yeah, he is a funny dude. Yeah. Le'Veon Bell is a funny is a funny dude. It's kind of crazy seeing them flip the switch on Sundays because yeah. it's like you're joking around and playing. Yeah. And then you out here killing people on Sunday. So it's like, <laughs> it's crazy seeing them flip that switch. But yeah, they, they're definitely funny guys and guys you like to be around. Okay. I wouldn't have seen that from Jacoby. He seems like such a serious guy all the time. Yeah. But actually behind the scenes, he's he's pretty loose. Man, he's cool. When you guys pull out those cameras, he, he yeah. straightens <laughs> right? up. Yeah. He looks like that quarterback. Yeah, yeah. Well, like, we're going to do this on third down and yeah. we're trying to lead this team. But behind the scenes with the cameras are off, he's... Man, he's super cool. Super yeah. cool, funny guy. Guy you like to be around. That must help him be a leader in the locker room if he's a guy that you want to be around and guys can connect with. Most definitely. Nobody wants to be around a... a a robot or or a yes man he he's a real guy with real feelings and you know he's able to laugh and joke and have fun while still being serious and, and leading the team which is cool and same thing with Le'Veon Bell he he jokes around he laughs around and but when it's it's game time and practice time he he flips that switch that's what I'm talking about Nate Har Nate Hairston joins us here on the show starting cornerback for the New York Jets all right so Next part of this season, you still you guys still got 13 games to go, so it's a long season still to go. You got any personal goals you want to try to achieve in the final 13? Um, I don't, man. I just want to win football games. I think that's the biggest thing. Winning football games, any any type of personal thing will, will come along with that. So just, just winning football games is, is my personal goal. I know you're active on social media, on Instagram. Yeah. And so all of our listeners can go follow you there and yeah. check it out. What are they going to see over the course of the season? Uh, what do you put? Do you post stuff on IG about your career and about football? Or you you mainly do like you know lifestyle stuff and what your life is like. Um, I mean, I post football pictures, of course. That's my job. I post you know some pretty cool pictures, uh, pregame stuff. Okay. But uh, I also like every morning I'll start off. I'll post some motivation on my story. I get a motivational text every morning from a mentor, so that's really cool. And a lot of people, if you're having a bad day and you tune into that, it, it could it could help you out going through your day. It helps me out. So do you usually get that from former coaches yep. or every day and then you repost it or you've collected them over the years and said, oh, I want to use these? So I, I repost them in the morning. I might not do it every morning, just kind of how, how I'm feeling or if it applies to me, that message. But I have them, I save them to the highlights so you can always go back and, and check them out and and, and look at them when you're feeling down or, or need some motivation. What I like about your IG page is that the pictures of you are really slick. I mean, yeah. they got the lighting down and yeah. the filter down. <laughs> and when you got your shirt off, I mean, you uh, are flexing. <laughs> you know, all these pictures are like glamour photos. Yeah. So whoever is taking your photos, you got to pay them, yeah. <laughs> pay them a good, good fee because they look really good. Thank you. I appreciate it. I don't know if you're doing the filters on them or somebody else. but I'm not. They just hand them to me and I, and I post <laughs> it. So. <laughs> Yeah. So it's at Finessin. Yes, sir. F I N E S S I N. Yes, sir. And how do we get to that uh, handle? Uh, 
<laughs> I think uh, somebody just kind of called me that a little while ago, maybe like high school. Okay. Um, that's been my handle for a while now. Yeah. So that was your you nickname know. in high school. Yeah. Vanessa. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, I mean, it, I think people kind of get a, a put a negative brand towards that word, but it, it's not just. No, I don't think so. Yeah, you know. I always think back to like Fast and the Furious. You've got The Rock, who's like super hardcore. Then you got like the Owen Shaw, the Paul Walker characters. I I kind of you know fit more more right. with those guys. I kinda feel you. That's finesse, cool. You know, I like that. I like that. So check out Nate Harrison on IG at yeah. Finessin and follow his stories throughout the NFL season. Yes, sir. Dude, this was a lot of fun, man. Whenever you guys have free time, I would love to have you back. Yeah, thank you guys for having me, man. Absolutely, my pleasure. Yes, sir. My pleasure. Nate Hairston joining us, starting corner of the New York Jets.